yeah good evening everyone uh, in the previous class we have discussed about uh, variables then identifiers then we slowly entered into operators okay we have completed uh, arithmetic operators then we have see we have given a rule for arithmetic operators called pemdas okay yesterday i have forgotten to give the program okay now i today i will give both the programs now today i want to complete all these operations uh, uh, can you please uh, make a notebook because uh, we need some computations today okay shall we go now yes, yes. let me start uh, relational and comparison operations now now the name itself says that uh, relational or comparison operators are used to compare the values of either side okay and uh, decide the relation among them okay it is going to return boolean boolean can be either true or false now let us uh, <coughs> python supports operators such as double equal to not equal to here i have an expression here i will have an expression okay i wanted to compare them okay now not equal to can be written in two ways one is uh, less than and greater than bracket or it can also be given as exclamatory equal to called as not equal then greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to in everyday application so we will use uh, relational or comparison operations remember carefully now whenever i compare left side expression with right side expression if the both expressions are equal i will return true yes sir i will return false let me discuss with simple examples now one is less than 2 one is less than 2 true or false true now 2.0 is greater than 1 yes true 2.0 left side is 2.0 right side is also 2.0 okay if both are equal i will return true okay 2.0 not equal to 2.0 it is false now let us take this expression uh, most of the people will be in the dilemma whenever we have this kind of expression first of all you go at right side 2 is less than 3 it is true na true will be represented as 1 so 1 double equal to 1 is it true the final answer then in this example 1 double equal to 2 it is false false will be represented as 0 okay 0 less than 3 is it true like this yes. we can compare left side expression and right side expression using either relational also called as comparison operations okay always it returns a boolean okay always boolean means we are going to represent either true or false in python true will be first letter will be capital t for false first letter will be capital f clear for you now let me demonstrate it with simple example yeah look at here one is less than 2 true 2.0 is greater than or equal to 1 true 2.0 double equal 2.0 both are equal so returns true here both are here it is saying not equal so it is false then 2 is less than 3 it is true true will be 1 false will be 0 so 1 double equal to 1 is true then 1 double equal to 2 false so false will be represented 0 0 is less than 3 true is it okay for you yes hello now one more important point most of the people will do a mistake print of 0.1 plus 0.2 can you please just guess what will be the answer just guess what will be the answer for this zero we will feel that it is 0.3 but internally which is going to store it like this now print 0.3 means 0.3 only now if i ask 0.1 plus 0.3 actually this value will be 0.30004 and the right side value so it is false most of the people will write it as true now let me tell you the reason shall i go 
this. Yeah. Um, I cannot make you to give to satisfy with my answer, but uh, I'll try my level best. Okay. Now, for understand this, we need this. We need discuss more Python concepts, please. Now, let me uh, dis demonstrate and discuss two minutes. There are two types of numerical in Python. One is integer, another one is float. These two are called as numeric items. One is integer, another one is float. Integer data type stores whole numbers. Okay. What is whole number? Zero to n, any number. Zero to any number is called as whole number. Whereas float data type store fractional numbers. Okay. Then one important point is uh, if I have very small number or very large number are usually represented as uh, scientific notations like uh, uh, 1.2 e to the power minus 2.5 like this. Okay. Very small number or very large numbers are represented in the form of uh, scientific notations. Now, for that, it uses a concept called IEEE 754 floating point standards, okay, which consisting of 64 bit, 64 bits. Any float or fractional numbers will be stored in 64 bits. Out of 64 bits, the first bit is called a sign bit. It will be minus or plus number. Then next 11 bits are called as exponent. That means e, e to the power. Then Finally, last 50 bit two bits are called as mantis. For example, if you want to store 0.1 in the memory, normally it will not be stored as 0.1. It will be stored in this notation. Okay. The first one is a zero. Next one is a, this one 52, 52 bits. Last one. 11 bits. This is called as exponent bits. Whereas 0 0.2 will be represented as like this. Zero now, if I add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2, it is giving this much value. But uh, it is internally stored by the processor. Okay. How it is, how it is stored, that we can't say. But uh, ultimately, when you go for technical examinations, if they give any question like this, uh, better to make it as false. Okay, this is especially used for Python. Okay, now, now 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. Actually, we will feel that 0 0.3, but uh, internally it is stored as well, this value. So I cannot compare 0 0.3 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2. It is false. So this is the answer. Is it okay? It is most important concept. Clear for you? Hello? Hello. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, please. Now, the next kind of operations are called as assignment operators. This we will do regularly. Okay, a equal to 10. That means we have assigned a value 10 to the variable a. Now, like this, Python supports uh, several assignment operators. First one is equal to, in equal to, whatever the right side value is there, that will be assigned to left side. Next one is a plus equal to, minus equal to, multiplication equal to, division equal to, like this. All the operations, arithmetic operations we have. Let me discuss a simple example, please. Now, in a regular statement assignment, what will we do? The right hand side is evaluated first. Whenever you take assignment operators, first of all, if I have any express right set, they will be evaluated first. So, this value will be 5. Then the 5 will be assigned to A before assigning the value to the left side. What will happen before assigning the value 2 to A? What will happen? This entire expression will be evaluated. Once this expression is evaluated, the result will be stored here. This is what happens in assignment. For example, if I do like this, what will happen? This is called as A equal to A plus 3. Okay. This is written as a plus equal to this is called as a shorthand side operations. Shorthand. Clear for you? Now, the left side is evaluated first. Now, before evaluating at right side. Now, 
what are the value a for example let us think i have a value 10 here then this value will be given here 10 plus 3 once again that result will be stored here is it okay hello yes okay yeah now now let us take a small example a comma b comma c equal to 21 comma 10 comma 0 now 21 will be copied to a 10 will be copied to b and uh, 0 will be copied to c is it okay now c equal to a plus b can you please tell me the result c equal to a, a is 21 plus 10 is it 31 yeah now now here i'm saying c plus a equal to a it can be written as c equal to c yeah. plus a so now here c is 31 and a is 21 so the c value will be 52 okay now hello okay now here c equal to c multiply a don't concentrate more on this is this is not much important so c value will be 52 52 multiplied by 21 that value will be stored here is it okay don't give much more important for assignment okay mostly we will okay. use only for equal to operation now this is the most important concept logical operations now the logical operations are used to in conditions or for example let us take i have an expression here i have another expression if i want to join these two if i want to join these two expression or you can have any number of expression i will use uh, logical operations are used to join two or more conditions or expressions by using three keywords first one is and second one is or third one is not let me discuss with this truth table for and okay now no. let us take uh, two inputs a b for example, let us take A as 0, 0. 0, 0 means false, false. So the result is 0. So when the input is 0, 1, if both are true, then only the result is true. Output is 0. Then 1, 0, still the result is 0. If both inputs are 1, 1, that is, if both inputs are true, then only the output is true. Is it okay? This is called as AND operation. Look at here. It returns true. If both the operands are true, now here A and B are called as operands. Okay, now, now is it okay? Now, shall I go for R operation? R operation means either one of the operand is true, then the output is true. One, one, one. But this is zero. Clear for you? Hello? Okay. Now, not operation exactly opposite to, for example, if my input is true, output is false. If my input is false, output is true. Okay, not as exactly if you give true, output is false. If you give false, output is true. Clear for you? Shall I discuss some examples? Yes. Now, now let us take this example. Okay, I have taken A equal to 50. Now, I'm asking a question, A mod 4, 50 mod 4. 12 fours are 48. 12 fours are 48. So the remainder is 2. This is remainder. When I give mod operation, I will give remainder. When I, this is called as quotient. For this, we'll use division operation. Now, please, can you please tell me the answer for A mod 4? Is it 2? Sure. Yeah. Now, 2 means true. And 50 is greater than 0. It is true. So, left and right side are true. So, the expression will be true. Is it okay? The answer for this expression is true. Will you agree? Yes. Now, can you please tell me the outcome of this? Anyone? Both of you. Now, this will be true. Okay? So, it is true. Or 50 is greater than 0. This is also true. Now, if any one is true, it's true. Now here both are true. So the expression for this is true. But uh, here I'm taking not of true. So final output is false. Will you agree? Can yeah. you please tell me? Yes, yes. Now, can you please answer me this question? This question? 
B1 and B2. By default false, because and means both should be true. But here only one operand is true, B1 is true, but B2 is false. So this will be false, clear? B1 or B2, B1 or B2 means true. either B1 are true or B2 are true. Now, if this is true. So not true. of B1, it is false. Clear for you? Yes. Yeah, now let me showcase it. Uh, I think she left the session. Can you please uh, uh, enquire? Yeah, yeah, I will call. Yeah. Now, let us look at uh, logical operation. Can you please, you must define what is mod operation. Mod operation always gives reminder. And division operation always gives quotient. Okay, now, for example, if I give uh, 50 double slash 4, what will be your outcome? Is it 12? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One second. I'll, I'm calling her. One second. Yes, yes, yes. Now, here I have taken <coughs> A equal to 50. 50 mod 4 is true. It is true. So the answer is true. And this answer is false. Not of true is false. Then B1 and B2, false. B1 or B2 true, not of B1, false. Clear for you? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. She, I, she now she is back. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, for next thing, can you please open your notebooks for understanding the next operation, bitwise operation? These are important for technical examinations. Okay? Bitwise operators. They will ask kindly open your notebooks and we will do try to solve some problems. Okay. Now, what is the difference between logical operations and uh, bitwise operation? Logical operators are uh, working on integers. Okay. In decimal notation, in decimal notation, whereas bitwise operators will work on bits. Okay. What is a bit in computer terminology? A bit is either 1 or 0. Is it okay? Always bitwise operators work only on bits. Okay? Bit by bit. So it has AND operation. This is called as bitwise AND. Pipe symbol. This is bitwise R. Tilde symbol. Bitwise NOT. XR symbol. Bitwise XR. Now, two right shift after bitwise right shift, bitwise left shift. Now, I wanted to discuss each and every thing with the small examples. You may get so many doubts. Please raise your doubts if you find any difficulty. I will try to answer them. Clear? Okay. Shall I start one by one? Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. Now, first of all, just now we have seen AND operation. If both the inputs are 1, then only the output is 1. Yes? 0. If in our operation, if either of the inputs okay, is 1, then output is 1. Just now we have seen in logical and or not. Then XR operation here, it is a different one. If both the inputs are zeros or if both the inputs are 1s. Now look at here. If both the inputs are same, that means either 0, 0 or 1, 1. The output is 0. If my inputs are either 1, 0 or 0, 1, the output is 1. This is the rule for XR operation. Clear for you? Now, shall I do a small example by taking these three? Let us take A equal to these are the bits operation. Now, B equal to these bits. Can you please respond? Yes. Now, a and B, that means both the operands should be true. Here, only one operand is so it is false, false. Here, both the operands are true. Then only the result is true. In remaining all the cases, it is false. Clear for you? This is called as A and B. Okay? 
then okay yeah r b either of the upper end okay here this is true this is true here this any one is true means this is true this is called as r operation now let me clear this and for discuss about xr operation now what is xr operation if both the inputs are either ones or if the both inputs are zeros then the result is zero in all other cases the result is one look at here can you please respond here this is also one because both are same clear for you can you please respond okay hello no sir uh xr malli uh, xr ah yeah please and let me erase it once now what is the rule for xr if both the inputs are either 0 0 output is 0 or uh, if both the inputs are 1 1 the output is 0 this is the rule for xr operation if xr operation will be true when any one of the output is opposite either 0 1 or 1 0 the outputs are one look at here here these are different inputs when you take different inputs the output is one if you take same inputs either 0 0 or 1 1 the result is zero clear for you yes now apply on this here these three are same so the output is three zeros here okay. the both the inputs are same so these two are zeros remaining all cases the outputs are one clear for you yes yes now there is one more operation called bitwise not whenever you have bitwise not whenever you have bitwise not it will be represented as a tilde symbol so directly write a formula whenever you have bitwise not uh, simply use this formula okay minus x minus 1 i will tell you the formula here now look at here i will tell you small exam bit what is bitwise not here please now let me explain shift left and shift right left also now uh, bitwise shift left that means uh, here you should have two less than two less than is called as bitwise left now it shifts all the bits to the left side by the specified position now bitwise right operation shifts all the bits to the right side now if i discuss in this way you can't get it first let me take a small example please here i have taken a comma b equal to 4 comma 5 here you want it to do in in the data in the form of bits so uh, you have to do in the form of uh, binary digits binary whenever you have the data in the binary format uh, you have to remember this formula 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 2 power 3 and so on 2 power 0 is 1 2 power 1 is 2 2 power 3 is 4 2 power 3 is 8 is it okay now what is the binary for 4 binary for 4 is 0 1 0 0 0 okay this is the four binary format clear now whenever there is a 4 now keep it as 1 remaining all cases you keep it 0 that is 4 now if i want to represent binary for 5 how can i write 4 plus 1 is 5 na? make it as 1 1 here remaining all are zeros so shall i call this as 5 can you please re respond yes yeah. now what is and operation and operation means if both are same then only the result is same here so the answer is same 0 1 0 0 a and b the answer is 4 now let us do a or b now in a or b either now this is one and this is also one remaining all are zeros so can you please tell me the answer for a or b is 5 can you please respond yes now how to do xr operation if both the inputs are same here in all these three cases inputs are same so result is 0 0 0 1 this is xr operation for 4 comma 5 okay na mm -hmm. now 
Now, if I want to calculate bitwise not operation, I have given a formula minus x minus one. Here x is four minus four minus one. So the answer for this is five. Directly, don't look at anything. Directly follow the blind formula in the technical examination. Okay na? Shall I showcase it? Then I'll go for right sheet operation. Okay na? Please shall I go? Yeah. Look at here, A and B. Answer is four. A R B. Answer is five. A X R B. Answer is one. Then not of A. Answer is minus five. Clear till now? Mm. Yeah. Sh shall we do a different number? No. I will take a different number and do it. Okay, now. Now instead of four five, shall I take? Uh, uh, two, two other numbers, mostly seven or eight. Okay, now seven or nine. Okay, now shall I do? Now, yes. how to represent seven or nine? Look at here, you should write like this one, two, four, eight. Okay, now. Now, now what is the value for seven? Four plus two is six, six plus one is seven. So make it as one, 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 zero. This is for seven. Is it okay? This is the binary for seven. Will you agree? Now, oh. what is the binary for nine? Binary for nine is eight will be one and one will be one. The remaining these two are zeros. Shall I call this as binary for nine? Yeah. Yeah. Now, for example, let us take uh, A as 22. How can I represent 22? Can I represent 22 with this number? Eight plus four is 12. 12 plus 3, 12 plus 2, 14, 14 plus 1 is 15 only. If we use in four digits, I can represent only 15. But if I want to represent 22, how can I do? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. That's it. You should go for one more bit. Now, how to get 22? Um, 16 plus 8, how much? 24. So 16 plus 4? 20. 16 plus 4 is 20 and 2. So answer will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Is it okay? okay. If you know okay. these notations, you can do anything. And operation means both should be same. Both should be on. R means any one should be on. XR means if you have any inputs are same, the result is 0. Clear for you? Now, if you permit me, I will do right shift and left shift operations. Shall I do? Yes. Yeah. Now, let me write this integer number seven in bits position. One, two, four, eight. So, seven will be zero, triple one. Will you agree? Yeah. Here, I'm asking my machine to shift my data to one bit right side. I'm asking my data. This is my A. A is, now look at, let, let us do like this. Please, everyone do like this. Like this. Then you can easily understand. Now, I this is called as right shift. Right shift. I'm asking my machine to just shift to right side one bit. So, this, uh, now, let me do like this four points, first point, second point, third point, fourth point. Now, this one will come here. This is one. This one will come here. This is one. This one will come here. Okay, now. Hello? Yes, sir. Now, uh, wait, 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 wait. How to shift this one? So, now we have done a small mistake. Please, one minute. Sorry, seven will be one, two, four, eight, na? one, two, four, eight. So this is zero, triple one. Now, whenever I am writing one shift right set, okay, na? simply what I will do is, okay, simply what I will do is, I will add this one, I will keep this one outside, okay, and uh, I will add. Uh, one zero here. Then 
if i shift this bit to what will happen it will remove the last one and uh, one zero will be added at right side left side so what will be the value ev3 hello yeah now once again let us take uh, right shift two if my input is zero triple one then can you please tell me the output if i want to right shift two bits now what i will do is this two bits i will remove and uh, i will add uh, two zeros so what will be the output this is one first shall i showcase this through jupyter notebook if i right shift one the answer is the answer is three if i right shift two the answer is one shall we check them in the jupyter notebook yeah Let us take seven. Two bits right side. The answer is one. So shall I go for uh, left shift? Now, how can we do left shift operation? Now, once again, here I have taken seven as a zero triple one. Zero triple one is called as seven. Now I want to do left shift of one. whenever i do left shift of one you simply do one point okay add one zero here and remove this value so make it as 1 2 4 8 what is the output 8 plus 4 is 12 12 plus 2 is 14 now output is 14 is it okay now is it clear for you for both of you now shall i move two bits left side now i have zero triple one if i want to have two is left two bits left side i will add two zeros here okay na i will add uh, two zeros here and i will remove two left side bits what is the answer for this can you please respond hello 12 is it 12 <laughs> here we will do a small mistake most of the people will do this kind of mistake is it okay shall i do it in a different way now for that let us take five numbers 2 power 0 2 power 1 2 power 2 2 power 3 2 power 4 2 power 4 is 16 8 4 2 2 one now write this number Zero, triple one. Is it okay? Now, if I want to have two bits left side, so what I will do? Two bits. I should go left side. So what I have to do? Can you please respond? Here, these two bits I will add two zeros. So I should shift these three ones to here. One, one, one. Now, can you please tell me the answer? Twenty-eight. Yes. 16 plus 8 24 24 plus 4 is 28 now let us demonstrate them in jupyter notebook most of the people will do a small mistake here now a less left shift one 14 once again if you shift it it will become 28 okay na for example yeah. if i give one more one more left shift can you please guess what will happen Fifty-six. Opposite. Fifty-six plus fifty-six, one twenty-eight. Four. Like this, it will increase exponentially. Okay, na? Yes. Got it. Uh, Anusha, clear? Then yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, these types of questions they will ask in the technical examinations. Okay, na? now if you permit me i'll go for the next two different operators and most important operators okay now python supports other others operator membership operations there are two oper first one is in operator second one is not in operator these two are called as membership operations okay now now first let me discuss uh, 
the membership operations are used to check if a specific item is present in the sequence now in python what are called the sequences now let us discuss a simple example there are four sequences in a python most important interval what are sequences in python please note down your new notebook python supports four kinds of sequences first one is range function range function this is tomorrow's topic range function range function generates a sequence of numbers sequence of numbers numbers then second second one is string object string object is a sequence of characters okay sequence of characters then third one is list and uh, tuple objects list and uh, tuple objects okay here they stores any kind of data they store any kind of data any kind of data these four are called as sequences okay na now string is a sequence because because now 1 2 3 4 5 are they in the form of a sequence can you please respond a b c d e are they following the sequence yeah yes now now this is one point another thing is python contains two kinds of collections first one is dictionary okay dictionary second one is set set now in dictionary the data will be stored in the form of a key and value pairs key colon value okay if i want to get this value i should know the key okay if you want to enter into your house first of all you should open a key okay na then only you can enter into like that if you want to access the values in the dictionary is you should know the key okay na now second one is set set stores the data in the form of a it eliminates duplicate data these are called as collections now membership operations are in and not in will work they are used to check if a specific item is present in the sequence or not now let us discuss some example shall i go yeah look at here range of 1 comma 10 look at here range of 1 comma 10 means which is going to one is called as starting number one is called as starting number 10 is called as ending number this number will not be included so it is going to start the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that's it range of 1 comma 10 means which is going to generate a sequence of number starting from 1 to 9 10 will not be included remember blindly okay whenever i use range function and the value should not be included is it okay here i am having in operation now what is the meaning of in operation e is used to check if a specific item is present in the sequence now in operation returns true by default uh, membership operations both in and not in returns true or false for example my pointer will be here do i have a number here yes so i have a first number so in operation returns true one will be copied to i i'm going to now print the for loop i will discuss in two, in a next session please okay na now these are called a sequence of characters now if i want to find this substring is it a part of the string if it is a part of a string i will return true okay yes i will return false clear for you now shall i demonstrate in jupyter notebook hello yes yeah uh, for loop it will take one more day for me to enter into it now harsha technologies now does Check is it a part of the string? If it is a part of the string, in operator returns true. Now, can you please answer me? What is will be the answer? True. True. Yes. Now, 
I am asking this question. If you say this answer, you will be more appreciated, please. False. Tell me, can you please tell me the reason? Uh, case and still. Very good, very good. Here, I'm using small case, but here I have uppercase. It is false. Now, actually, this is called as list. One, two, three, four, five. Now, I'm asking my machine, six, is it a part of this list? Can you answer me? No. No. So, it returns false. Now, tech, is it a part of the string? Yes, that you already discussed in the now. For example, if I ask comma six, then what will be the answer? It is true. Okay, now? Can you answer me? Yes, sir. Yes. Now, I will give opposite of this logic, please. I will give opposite of this logic. Here, I will ask uh, not in. While using not in, you don't combine them. These two are different one. Okay, six not in, L, pass. Clear? For example, if I remove the six, uh, then I will ask. It returns true. Clear? Not yeah. in, exactly opposite to in operator. Clear for you? Yes. Now, let me go for uh, another operator. Membership, without having membership operation, you can't write not even a single program in Python. Yeah. Next one is identity operations. Most important for interview purpose. Python supports uh, two operators, is and uh, is not. For example, these two operators are used to check if two variables are values are located with the same memory location. For example, if I do like this, A equal to 10, B equal to 10, then what will happen? Both A and B will be stored in the same location. Okay, now. For example, if B value is 20, then B will be stored in a different location. Now, I wanted to check whether two memory locations are same or not. For that, uh, I will use uh, is and not an is not operation. Always which returns a true or false. Shall I demonstrate with the beautiful examples? Yes. Yeah, look at here. I will try to discuss uh, one operator here, please, function. Now look at here. X1 equal to 10, Y1 equal to 10. Both are having same value. So, x1 is y1 by default it is true okay na? why hmm. it is true in order to now oh, if i want to know the where exactly x1 is stored so i will use a built-in function called id okay na? id of x1 look at here it is going to give a 16 digit uh, unique number id of y1 now these two are storing in the same location if x1 and y1 are locating in a same memory location i will return true okay na? hello yes now second one is here you must be wonder x2 equal to harsha y2 equal to harsha because it is going to return false because reason is id of x2 is different uh, id of y2 is different the reason is uh, immutability of strings. I will discuss this concept in the next coming sessions. Okay, now? Hello? If yes, sir. both x1 and x2 are storing same location, I will get true here. But uh, these two are showing different locations. So my result will be false. Clear for you? Yeah. Then let me take one more example. S1 is data science, S2 is data science. So, IDs are dif different. Now, I'm asking is not. Is not is exactly opposite to is operation. Okay? It is showing it is true. Can you please respond? Yeah. Now, I'm taking x3 equal to 1, 2, 3. x, y3 is also 1, 2, 3. Now, x3 is y3. The answer is uh, false here because ID of, look at here, ID of X3, 
how much now now let me take a id of y3 they are not same oh sorry look at here id of x3 and id of y3 both are same so y is returning Mm, no, it's one. different, sir. How? Oh yes, yes, they are different. Yeah, I thought this is six forty. <laughs> it should not give same value, so it is false. Clear for you? Yeah. Now, finally, if you know all the operators, and you should also know what is the precedence of e all operators. So, precedence of operators will be from highest to lowest if you observe this ppt always now i am going from exponential operation are having highest precedence look at here this is highest precedence then unary operator then arithmetic operations then addition subtraction then bitwise operations then logical operation then we have these things that means these operators are having lowest precedence star star operations are having highest precedence if we give an expression that will be evaluated in this way okay na no? but for you it is not required okay na no? because for data science students sir this is not required if you permit me i will just go to the next ppt shall i go okay now in the first class i told that uh, everything in python is an object okay na everything in the python is an object including data types are also called as objects because uh, integer is an object then float is an object then string is an object then boolean is an object everything is an object okay na so how can i find whether a variable is uh, variable is object or not uh, this can be done by using a function called can you please tell me type of type of variable name here i should pass a variable as argument okay now type function determines which class a value or variable belongs to now shall i demonstrate this with simple examples look at here let us take numbers now a number is a data type in python to store numeric values and it is immutable immutable means once you create a number you can't change it immutable means we can't change it okay na no? we can't touch it okay you can't add any data you can't delete any data you can't change the data this property is called as immutability okay na no? when the value of variable is changed a new object will be allocated now there are three different kinds of numbers in python one is integers next one is floats third one is complex numbers complex numbers will be represented in the form of a plus i j okay this will be represented in the form of vectors in physics and chemistry and maths now if x is equal to 1 type of x means uh, it is display class of uh, int is it okay now shall i call integer is a data type object now i am taking 1.0 is a float type of y is giving me a float 1.2j this is called as a uh, complex numbers okay now we have a function is instance is used to check whether an object belongs to this particular instance or not look at here now is instance uh, i am checking 1 plus 2j it is a complex both are same okay na hello so it returns to here then next one is uh, how can i convert the data from integer to float now let me clear the screen for 2 minutes now i can convert integer to float i can convert float to integer this is called as a conversion now python supports two different kinds of conversion first one is a implicit conversion where conversions will be done automatically okay automatically convert one data type to another 
now doesn't need explicit user inversion now explicit conversion means users convert the data into object by default you by using a built in functions called int function float function str function now let me discuss with a simple example i have taken integer as 1.23 float as 1.23 so if i add 123 add with 1.23 what will happen 124.23 okay this is the result of this one now type of integer it is int type of float is float the new value will be floats is it okay python always converts smaller data type into larger data type to avoid loss of data is it okay now what is explicit conversion here one value is integer another value is string it is not possible so explicitly i should convert look at here the most important thing is the most important thing is if you want to convert data type int can be converted to float and uh, float can be converted to int but uh, you can't convert int to string or float to string for that you, you, you should need uh, built in functions support look at here what i have taken int <coughs> int <coughs> int of str1 456 is a string this i am converting into integer now 456 has been converted to integer now. integer is 123 and num string is 456 the result is 6 plus 3 is 9 5 plus 2 is 7 4 plus 1 is 5 clear for you this type of conversion is needed some built in function such as integer or float or string this is called as explicit type conversion clear for you yes now with this uh, shall we stop today session yes hello now i'll send the programs and one thing please don't uh, don't leave the session i wanted to show you how to execute from jupyter notebook okay please now uh, let me walk now for example whenever you uh, press jupyter notebook like this it will come like this na now yeah. what are the programs i'm sending to you put it in your any directory or desktop okay and uh, go to here like this please go here like this okay files okay go for uh, go for desktop in my desktop i have three files then click on here that double click this that's it are you getting me whatever sure. the files i am sending to you whatever the files i am sending to you go to desktop put on the desktop and double click it that's it no need to do anything okay na okay hello for example if you want to create a new blank file go for new python 3 which creates uh, a new file to you clear okay once you create a file rename it file save as okay na you can do anything okay na now today i am sending these three files you have to okay. practice the first one okay na python basics only okay na now you have to practice only this one identifiers variables operators and data types okay na shall i send this one or shall i send these three no sir yeah now with this shall we stop the today session